Welcome to this video which is looking at the solar and the installation of it. If Hanukkah moves the camera up you'll be able to see the solar which is on the roof there. Uh, I have four panels in place. Each panel is 175 watts so that makes two panels is 350 so it makes four panels is 700 watts of power that we have obviously we don't get that all the time and the, the rest of it all I think um, will be explained in the video those have been mounted on the roof rack which we made and been bolted on we've had it on for a little while now driven around a fair amount and no, they do seem to be actually stuck on so it's, there's no issue with them coming loose or anything like that. Just interesting in the video itself we have put in a whole thing about us going to buy the panels in Dubai showing a little bit of a sandstorm. Um, as normal when you look at it it doesn't look so bad but when you're actually driving through it it was actually not as nice but hopefully it might be a little bit interesting for you to see a little bit of Dubai, a little bit of the weather, a little bit of places that we go to go buy our things um, but if you don't want to watch that, then just skip to the important things about actually putting the solar panels on. And as usual, please subscribe if you haven't. Please ask your friends to subscribe, press the like button, and feel free to leave any comments there. We do look at them all and we do enjoy seeing your comments. And if there are any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. And that's it. Yep. Okay. Enjoy the video. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay, these are the brackets I've had made. So that slips on there. I've never tested them here, so I'll be hoping that we've got to put the bolts in first. These bolts go in there, and you'll see they've got square bits, they're carriage bolts, so that they'll stay on and not turn. That goes in there. This piece then goes on and that will lock on that tab so it can't slide either way. And then this goes on top to clamp it. And we want a washer on there. We want a nut on there. open-ended spanner or ring spanner, hang on. Okay, looks like these bolts could have been a little bit shorter, but it doesn't matter. They are stainless, so the exposed metal should not be a problem. And this is stainless as well. These galvanized poles are in preparation for the roof rack. They're all going to go on top. So I have just finished painting them with a primer specifically for galvanized iron. And you can see the primer here. So the baked and I used four small cups mixed with a small cup of the small tin so it's a ratio of four to one actually I lie I used two cups and a half cup but the ratio is four to one which I mixed together and then I painted this and then tomorrow I will paint this with a speci special top coat for galvanized iron and this will just stop the rust. There are more poles to come but John still has to work them out because he has to work out what solar panels he needs before he does the crossbars. But this is my work in the meantime. 
This is the finished product of the steel rods or galvanized rods which are going on the roof rack. It's not the best of painting but I've done my best just to make sure that it's covered properly so that it won't rust. And after doing the undercoats I then do the top coats. So we've got here a guard top coat with a guard hardener. It was quite a thick paint so quite difficult to paint so I eventually thinned it a little bit and as it's not for show it doesn't matter if they drips and things that don't look as nice. did the made the brackets for this had them made one of the few things I've had made so now I'm putting the beginning of the roof rack on this is uni strut which I'm using it's been through the local paint shop and been coated with epoxy coats epoxy paint so that's the down the two down each side and then I will have cross members to hold whatever's necessary in place, uh, which will most probably be the solar panels, I hope. We're busy assessing our power requirements. So Hans got some food here to cook. I've just boiled two cups of water so we can measure how much coffee we can have. The rice cooker is busy going. That'll be another 20 minutes odd, Hans says. So we're doing each thing one at a time so we can get a proper assessment of the power requirements in the van. Um, I boiled the water on the induction cooker. The other one which I want to test is through an electric kettle. Um, see what the efficiency is there. So we'll bring you back when we start cooking. Oh. Right, so we're going to try and cook a meal in the van today. We've already cooked our rice, which has come out really nicely in our rice cooker. And it also has a function of in the top part I can steam some vegetables so I can do those together but I decided for today to actually fry to fry the vegetables and I'm also going to fry some chicken John's already boiled some water Let's see how that goes I've got my induction cooker here and I've got all my ingredients for cooking so we're going to start off can i do both plates at the same time yep. no, you're doing a meal now so. yeah. this is actually enough for two meals or maybe two and a half meals so because we have a fridge we can keep the leftovers for the next day Another thing with positioning the van, it's quite important for my induction cooker to be flat. So we have to you make level. sure. No, you, you're putting that on too high, I think. Okay, I can put it down. And I put it down, I can put it down. Okay. 
that's all right, it's all hot enough. It's on, um, you know what it is. Yeah, not there. Function. 1200. 1000. So you're using 2500 altogether? Yeah, so what I can do is I can, if it's a problem, I can make this one a little bit better. Now, just on an aside, John, if I do make a sauce with vegetable stock, mm. I would need a cup of boiling water. Okay. At the moment, I'm drawing 400 amps, which is I've quite a lot. Switch the chicken for Okay. Now, if I make potatoes, that will then take a little bit longer because you've got to boil the water and you've got to boil it for mm. at least 45 minutes. But on a, you can do it on a low. low yeah. Okay, this is done enough. Let's do the next test, which will be two cups of water in the electric kettle. See how that does compared to on the induction cooker. So we have to do the analysis and see if our power requirements are okay now. We are on our way to Dubai to go and buy solar panels. But this is the weather that we have to deal with incredibly windy and so we've got a sandstorm which could have been worse but it rained last week so at least it's not completely dry otherwise I think we wouldn't be able to see anything. I'm doing 90 k's an hour if I try and get up to 100 the van is almost uncontrollable I'm sailing down the road and again these are our trucks. We don't have a rail railway system yet. It is busy being built and it'll be interesting to see how many trucks go off the road then. But this is the main truck highway, so that's why there are so many trucks on this particular highway. But yeah, it's not exactly wonderful driving conditions. Dubai is split Keep by left. the creek. 
So on the one side you have Burj and on the other side you have Dera. This is also the road to the In 800 meters. This on the right is the Dubai Airport, which is possibly one of the most important airports in the world and everybody seems to transfer through this airport. There you can see the Emirates planes. Please excuse my wife, she's a musician, she doesn't know her right from her left. What did I say, right? Yes. Oh, I meant the left, oh. on my left. I do my right, know my right from my left, very much so no, as a musician. No, you uh, bass and treble. No, I do know my right from my left, but my students confuse me because they don't know. You retired, you don't have students. Yeah, well that's exactly why <laughs> my <laughs> brain's asleep. <laughs> I thought I'd recorded everything, but I hadn't, so I'll say it all again. This is the Dubai skyline. You can see the Burj Khalifa on the right. It's the tallest building in the world. Today is Friday. It used to be our weekend, but as from the 1st of January, our weekend's been moved to Saturday, Sunday. So we now have a four and a half day week especially for governments and schools, private companies can still do their own thing. But the main aim is for companies to close at 12 o'clock on a Friday to give everyone time to get to the mosques by 1.15 for Friday prayers, which is the main prayer time and mosque time of the week. This is also then just all the traffic it's relatively clear considering that we having massive winds. In three kilometers, storms. take exit 27. This is Dragon Mart, where we're going to buy our solar panels from. It's a very big shop inside selling all Chinese things from tools to clothes to electronic stuff. Keep right, then solar, slide right. To all kinds of things. And we came last week to price the solar panels and the sizes and Take the next right. done all these working outs and we've decided that this is the way to go. So we've come here today Continue to, for one and a half kilometers. to buy them. So this is Dragon March. You can see all the shops are inside. It's really big inside and you can get lost really easily. But it's quite a lot of fun. Dragon Mart. We're in the lighting section now. Trying to find our shop. It's very difficult to get lost in here and remember where you are. This is obviously not the way. So we'll just walk behind John and you can see all the different little shoppy shops. It's almost like a souk in here. It's very quiet at the moment because it's close to prayer time. So most of the shop workers are on their way to the mosque. middle section and then you have all these little shops going on the sides. John buying a lock for the mashless that we're moving into. So that one tick off our list. For those of you that don't know, we live in a villa that has an extra 
extension to it and we're going to be moving into that extension it's called a mashless because the villa is too big and we're busy packing up to get ready for our van trip so we're just getting a lock for the door Just battling to find our solar shop. We know it's around here somewhere. And we have luck because we have found our shop. <laughs> Hoping somebody will come help us. <laughs> Back home was definitely worse than the road going to Dubai. It's far more windy, we're having to drive quite slowly, the van's going all over the place and we've got a lot of sand blowing over and it's quite cold, it's 17 degrees. It's freezing. Which in the UAE is quite cold. They're actually expecting it to go down to zero in some places today with frost. So we're in for a cold weekend in weather that we're not really used to, but it does happen in this country. I'm busy trying to fit the solar panels. Um, as you can see, I put in place here and um, these are just temporary for the moment so I can get the placing and that correct I now have to put two uh, going forward there and that's going to be a little bit more tricky so let's see what I can manage I haven't tried it yet so. let me get down and we'll go to the other side Have a double one to attach it there. Have a single. I don't have any more double clamps. See, this one is a double, this is a single. I only got two set doubles. So I'm going to clamp it with a single here to start with. Not enough space for it to open, so I'm going to have to move this, loosen this, and move it out slightly. Okay. 
that the pension is complete. Unfortunately, this does overhang the van by about 10, 10, 12 centimeters. In total, it should give me 680 watts of power. Double clipped because I'll put two here and then on the other end we'll, we'll have singles. I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to put a bar through the middle to support that. Um, I, I don't think it needs support, I think it should be able to go without it, but it will be picking up wind as we go forward. Okay, now we've just got to measure the two front pieces of Unistrut and cut them. And then they can go to the paint shop. Introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi, I'm Liam. <laughs> So today we're going to be opening up the, the package that arrived. Let's see what's inside. MPPT. Ethernet cable to USB. Mm -hmm. We've got our remote meter. And then, oh. okay, so this looks like it's been added in extra. So it's not part of a standard package, but part of this package. That's good. And this is a heat thermal sensor, I think. Yeah, this is the temperature sensor for the batteries. And here is our meter. Oh, meter. Uh, controller. In controller. It's the EP Ever one. Other bits in there? That's it. That's it. Yeah. Heat, big heat sink. Yeah. Um, okay. Well. So, what have we got here? We've got our positives, negatives. Back, so, that, that's, that's for the battery. Back, yeah. Battery. And this is for the load. Yes. Okay. Now, I have not. And there's a fuse. And then Ethernet. Yeah. And there's it also these sensors jumpers here. You, you can actually do a startup of a generator if you need. But I actually thought it had a load, a load dump. These are load relays. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we'll install that later. 
tell me what you're doing. I'm busy attaching the crossbars, cross members for the uni strut. And on top of this, the solar panels will rest. I'm just redoing this bolt because I forgot to put Loctite on the thread, which I want to do to ensure that they don't vibrate loose. You bring the shorter one into the back? Um, it's not an issue of the shorter or the longer, it's the position of the hole. Oh. The things are not well aligned. It's more on the passenger side because that's where the door opens. So if you want to hang something, you've got a little bit of something there. Um, so what I would suggest is you get down and move the ladder to here okay then pass me a panel and I'll first just use a panel to measure here and then put it on there. Okay. okay. Am I going all the way or? Um, you need to go, you need to lift the panel up because that loose bit needs to slide underneath the panel. Okay. Um, it's two on each side, right? Yes. Okay, so how many things are these? Are there? One, two, three. You're 13. So go three, three. So on the third one, in the middle of the third one, in the middle of the third one. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Yeah. So like here? Mm hmm? Sorry? I think this is the place. Don't tighten it too tight. No, just like just, just to grip it. Grips, yeah. yeah, and we'll oh, because we've got to put Loctite on mm. as well. Yeah. So,
While we were working with Liam, you would have seen us putting the panels on the roof. So I've just temporarily connected them because I wanted to test the MPPT charge controller. So it's now connected. As you can see, there's a, a green light flashing there. Not sure how well it'll show in the videos because of the frame rate. The cabling is a bit of a mess but it's really just to test it so we've got the solar panels coming into a double pole switch. From there we come into the panel side of the MPPT and from there I've got uh, 16 millimeter square cables going into my bus bars. That's the cable coming in there and there. Again just temporary so we can check that it's working. So after switching it on we also have the MT50 control panel. Uh, let's see where we can get the least reflection there so you can see at the moment I've got 85 volts 86 volts coming from the panels and I'm drawing 3.7 amps uh, the battery is at 14.1 volts at the moment and so I'm pumping 22 amps in there and the controller is also recognizing that there's zero load on the system at the moment so I'm going to leave it running for the rest of the afternoon we'll see how the battery goes and how it charges up. Uh, at the moment all the cables are fairly are cool, uh, the batteries are cool and so are the BMS things. So I was considering using 25 square mil cables but I think the 16 mil is going to be quite adequate because we're unlikely to get the full 60 amps out of this. So that's the test set up at the moment. The next thing will be to disconnect it all and actually mount it in its final position.